Good morning. Hello and welcome to this week's live craft and chat. Sorry, I was just a little bit late. I was making a thing and lost track of time. That's all it was, but I was making it for you. So, you know, hopefully you can hear me, you can see me, all that kind of good stuff. I'm just moving some screens around here so that I can see the comments. Um, I'm just killing some screens so I can have the one I want. There we go. How's that? So good morning to everybody. Hello. Um, I'm seeing some stuff about Angela needs to feel better. So I hope Angela does feel better soon. Um, Leanne is saying to hit that thumbs up and check your live chat is not in top chat. Thank you for the reminder. Mine was totally in top chat. So I'll fix that right up. Guys, Abby, well, I'm, go I'm not going to blame Abby. I think the cold weather has given me a little bit of a head sniffles. So I have tissues here. I have a mute button. So hopefully I don't trigger anybody with, you know, nose blowing things. I hope I remember to, you know, hit the button, hit the button. Um, so I just, I do want to add in, we do have a Louis Cam here and he is here. So uh, let us add Louis in. Oh, he's kind of. He's moved. He's moved. So let's 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 see if we can bring him into the shot a bit better. There you go, Lulu. All right, let's have a look. Um, yeah, it was cold here this morning. Again, it was. It's been cold the last few days here. Um, it is, you know, it's surprising. And but I also love it. I also love it. Uh, Josephine thought she was late. No, I I was late. Josephine, I was late. Um, good morning, Jen Homewood. It's nice to see you in the chat. And good morning to Vampia. Oh, no. Cam Widows has had the hiccups all morning. Oh, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Um, so the cutest thing happened this morning and I managed to get um, I managed to get some photos of it. So I'll put them over in the fun zone. But Louie and the new kitten, Macy, were both asleep on Louie's chair. And it was the cutest thing um, I was kind of hoping she'd come in and she has come in to check out where everyone was, but she ran away again. So hopefully she's not out there trashing the house because she is a new kitten and new kittens will just trash your stuff because it's like, oh, this is new. I'm going to rip it apart. Cool. Um, and I do have some scratches and things on my arm. So if you spot those in the live stream, don't panic. It's just from the kitten. Let's test out the new meat feature already. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Hopefully that muted for you and you guys couldn't hear me blowing my nose because that's a horrible sound. I hate that sound. Um, so I'm just like, I'm like, I think I've missed something. Sally's telling Game Winners to say, you are not a fish. Um, yeah. Oh, welcome to the world of having a kitten. It's been a long time since I've had a kitten. Tibbles is 14. Um, and, and the memories are starting to come back of like the stuff that he got up to, the stuff that he got up to. Um, I've got my, my nerd flag flying rather proud. Um, I don't know. I can't move it, but I've got some, I've got a few little, you know, Star Wars things hiding around and it is May the 4th in Australia. I know it's not May the 4th yet in, uh, in the US, but in Australia it is. So happy May the 4th, everybody. And may the 4th be with you. Um, so, you know, uh, mute, mute works perfectly. Yes. Thank you. It's just something I just threw onto the stream deck this morning. Um, because I was like, oh man, I know I can do it and I've never had it there. I normally manually click the little button on my screen. I'm like, but I'm going to need something that I can just sort of reach out for and grab as I'm lunging for a tissue. Um, now it is, it is May the 4th. So Star Wars day plus also, it is the first Thursday of the month. So there is Caffeinated Crafters on tonight. I'm going to have to wait and see how I'm feeling a little bit later. It could be because like I'm thinking it's just the cold air of the morning that's making my nose run. Um, but I'm not going to take germs out. Like if I feel like it's an actual cold or something like that, I'm not going to go out. Uh, but if it's just a morning cold air thing, because it was five degrees here this morning, it was very cold. So... Um, my nose and, and body don't, aren't used to those kinds of cool temperatures. 
I love them. I'm not complaining about them. Uh, it's just change of season messes me up sometimes. Crochet with Claire said that she forgot that we're on the same time now. Awesome. I'm glad you've made it. Maybe it's the kitten that causes sniffles. Well, we've had the kitten a week now and this is my first sniffles. So unlikely, unlikely. Not impossible, but un unlikely. Um, let me have a look here. I'm just checking the chat. I'm checking the chat to see if there's anything I have missed. Okay. I, oh, and I also, I have a, a very cute Prezi here. So I have my little Grogu pin on. I have my Star Wars water mug, which it was right here. And I'm like setting everything up, like finding some extra Star Wars things. I'm like, oh my God, my cup is just automatically Star Wars. So, Game Widows, I need to know how many more of these gorgeous pouches do you have left? I don't know if I got that one in time. I really don't know. <laughs> and based on the bless yous, probably not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying really hard to not sneeze into the into the camera. Okay. So Game Widow says she's only got three of these left. So these are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous um, humbugs. Sorry, my brain just, just um, went. But they've got the most gorgeous like gaming fabric as well as they've got a little d20 um dice on them as well and, and that's actually removable so you can make it it's a lobster claw stitch marker so actually let's just let's just go down to the other camera here so it's a little lobster claw stitch marker so um if you want one there's only a couple left so you need to get in quickly and they are gorgeous. I've filled mine with dice because I just thought that was appropriate. But you could totally put craft stuff in yours. Mine's got all the little packs. Like, you remember how I bought the three different packs of dice from um, from Natural 20? Natural 20? I think it's a, I think it's Natural 20 is the name of the company. Who, who I bought all my dice from. There's a link in the description down the bottom. Um, but, so Game Widows has got, like, like all these cute little... Um, They've got the, the D20 gorgeous fabric. It's got all different types of dice on it as well as some adventure stuff. So definitely get in there. Relieve her of the last couple of these so that she can make us something else. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay. Oh, I've realized my keyboard's still in the middle of the table. So let's just move that out of the way. All right. So we should probably jump in and start... Uh, get some dice rolling so that we can get our first color for the day chosen um what do you guys think do you think we're ready for a dice roll it's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time roll the dice to choose the next color okay it's dice roll, dice roll. i didn't mean to hit that again i hit the wrong button there we go all righty we have a six so a six is amphibian. Oh, I've got to lose the duckling. It's jumping off the side. Don't jump off the side, duckling. All right, we've got at number six. We'll write that on our list. That was last week. They're all done. Okay. Let's get started. So we could keep chatting. We could keep chatting while I do this, right? Otherwise, we never get our floor in. But um, I do love that um, that the last few weeks we've managed to just push hard towards the end. It's like the end is like, are we even talking? No, we're not talking because I'm crocheting like a fiend to try and get our fourth dice roll in. So I, I want to make it less that, more chatty, uh, but I still want four dice rolls. Does that make sense at all? Maybe not? Maybe? Okay. Um Let's have a look. Crochet with Claire loves my graphic. Thank you, Crochet with Claire. I appreciate that. Um, don't you have a Stormtrooper bag? Or was that someone else? 
Oh, no. I do have a Stormtrooper bag, I think. Because I have two of your project bags, and I've got my, my Marvel and DC, but I do have... Stormtrooper bag is somewhere else. I don't know where it is, but I do have one. You're quite right. So this room's just starting to warm up. So hopefully, um, yeah, I think you're right, Vampire. I think it is struggling to focus a little bit. What I might do is I'm just going to jump over into the controller for it and see if I can flick off the autofocus and just have it. That's focused enough, right? And at least then it's not traveling, like it's not searching. So it might not be super sharp, but, you know, we're struggling with, because of the, I, I now know not to choose a really super hot, bright color that I'm going to use in every single, set, well, every second row because none of my cameras can cope with it. Um, oh, I do have my Star Wars fusion blanket on the go as well. Absolutely, I do. I probably could have worked on that today for something a bit different, but do you know what? I've been looking forward to working on this blanket all week. Like that's the problem with this blanket now is I only work on it during this live stream. And now it's just like, but I want to work on it. And it's like, you can't, you have to work on something else. Um, Natalie says that I should be working on my Star Wars blanket today. What about, what if we do half this blanket and then at the second half I'll run out and grab because I've got some squares I can edge onto and I'll run out and grab those but I, I mean I did make a Star Wars graphic so that for those of you that do mention Star Wars during the chat um, I, ca I can you know bring in this new graphic where'd it go come on Oh, I think Amphibian's hiding it. That's annoying. Let's move Amphibian here and see if that's what's happening. No, it's just not coming up. It worked at the start. Why is it not working now? Oh, my goodness. Where is it? Um, I'm getting the audio, but not the video. Math rocks. Charlotte Sheen. I think I might have accidentally deleted my, my folder. That's really disappointing. Hang on. Surely not. Ah, oh, hang on a second. I know what I've done. I've made it for, for this scene only, haven't I? Let me look. I did. Let's move it. There we go. The nature of setting things up when you're doing things on the roll. Let's see. There it is. Hello. And it does go over the top of the others. I thought I organized it better than that. Um, let me see. I can hear a sound, but I don't see. Sorry, Josephine. Yes, you're right. There was a sound, but nothing happening. Um, and it was because I set it up to be only in the other scene, which I've fixed now. Fixed it on the fly. Welcome to live streaming where you need to like decide, do you want to fix it right now or are you fine without it? And I was not fine without it. I wanted it. It was why I was late. <laughs> I was making a fun Star Wars thing. But yeah, we can totally, um, we can totally work on the Star Wars fusion blanket for the second half of the live stream. So that means we'll only get a couple of rows of this one done. And then we will work on the fusion blanket. How does that sound? This is the way. Absolutely, John. Absolutely. Um, you know, live streaming, you start adding in all these extra features and extra things. Uh, there's a risk that you just got to trash it. Well, speaking of trashing things, let's change scene so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, Louis left plenty enough room excuse me, for Macy to come in and hang out, but she's off ransacking the house. So uh, actually what she likes to do is she likes to get as close to Tibbles the cat as possible before he swipes her. That's her, that's her current favorite game is just creeping on the old cat. 
Um, cause she's like, dude, you're a cat. I'd like to hang out with you. And he's like, I don't care. You little rodent, get away from me. And just hits her and pushes her away and walks off and yeah. And she's, she's stout. She's like, yeah, whatever, dude, I'm coming. I'm coming with you, whatever. And he's like, fine, but stay over there. Uh, but he was very interested in a game that Tibbles and Macy were playing, uh, where Macy chased no, not Tibbles and Macy, Louie and Macy, where Macy chased Louie down that went down the house and then Louie chased Macy back up the house. And, you know, it was, it was, they thought it was fun. Let's just go with that. It was very loud, but they thought it was fun. Um, and they did that for, you know, like 10 minutes, just taking turns chasing each other. Louie has been trying to get her to go outside and she's an inside cat so whenever we let Louie out, he tries to get her to go with him and we have to hold her because she wants to go. And he gets all sad and miffy and just comes back inside. Like, I want to play Chasey's with the cat outside. Whereas, because Tibbles is allowed out, Macy is not. She's too small. And there's big birds here that could just take her away. Also, you know, she is a cat. And Louie, uh, Tibbles is old and curmudgeonly. And he doesn't leave the ground for any reason. He's also too lazy to hunt lizards, whereas she's new and young and excited. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna test out the uh, the old mute button again. Ah, oh, that's exciting. So what's everybody else working on? You know, I've got, I've got the cat, I've got Louie, I've got projects and all sorts of things happening. Lots of things up in the air. What are you working on? Let me know in the chat. Also, I really do like this amphibian green. So if it, did anyone catch Maker's live stream on Monday? Um, or Katie Ray or Katie Ree over on her channel. She's made a top using the flamingo pink and the green. Her camera copes so much better with the pink than any of mine do. Um, even, yeah, even, even this one doesn't cope super well. Um, but yeah, it's, um, the, the two look really gorgeous together. The colors. Absolutely. Good morning, Stacey. Welcome to the chat. Um, Kathy is working on a blanket with cables. Ooh, that'll be lovely. Um, Sally was there. She was modding. Awesome. It was good to see you girls over there modding away. Um, let me look here. I'm sitting here doing nothing at all from Francis. <laughs> there are days, Francis, where I just put the TV on, you know, and it's just like I'll just sit there for an hour going, Oh, I've done absolutely nothing, but I have watched an episode of this show. And it's weird because I don't normally watch TV without a craft project. But every now and again, my brain, like I'll just sit with it in my lap, like, and like stare at the screen and be doing like absolutely nothing. Um, Oh, you're all crafted out. Sorry, it took me a second to work out what that was. Crafted out after working the last week of working on stuff for my exhibition. Well, that would that would definitely tucker you out. Your brain probably just needs to step away for a, for a moment, for sure. Um, Francis says none of my tea cozy salt. Oh, that's disappointing, Francis. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Natalie is still working on her nephew's birthday blanket. I have about a month to finish it. How do you feel? Do you feel like you can get it done in a month? Like, is there a month's worth of work or is there like six months worth of work you've got to try and get done? Um, Vampire is making a floor rug using the tiramisu baby blanket pattern. What are you making the floor rug out of? Oh, and I did want to let you all know, um, I have got some yarn incoming. I don't want to give away too much about it, but I did hear some of you, like some of you were talking about how, you know, you don't use acrylic and that's totally fine. I don't, I don't wear acrylic. So I do totally understand that there's a time and a place for, for yarns and fibers. Um, 
And so I have some wool incoming to test and check out that comes in like an, an absolute array of colors. And so I'm keeping an eye on that. That should be here in time for next week's live stream for you to have a look at. Um, and I may not be able to hold myself back and I might just make a little video um, as well so that you can get an early bird preview. Um, but definitely keen. There's two different types of wool. One has got like, I don't want to go into too much detail, but they've got so many colors, so many colors. Anyway, that's coming. So I have been listening and I've heard that not everybody wants to make their things out of acrylic and we've got some gorgeous wool coming for you to check out as well. It's, an, it's another small Australian business. So that is exciting and I cannot wait. Honestly, I'm so stinking excited um, when, when, I, when I got the tracking for my package and I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's coming, it's coming. Um, it says sometime between Friday and Tuesday and I'm like, I'm really hoping it's one of those things where, you know, it's the Friday. I wanted to come on the Friday. Like some things I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. But no, no, this, this, this I want. I want it now. Thank you very much. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, I did sell, so Francis did, did have some success. I did sell a big shawl and lots of hand spun. Well, that is awesome. You've cleared some space. Um, Leanne says, I have squares on drying mats. I'm playing with knitting loom for something different. Nice. Stacy says, I'm cross-stitching this morning. I, Do you know what? I kind of miss cross-stitching. Um, I put all my cross-stitching stuff away when Abby was a toddler and I never really pulled it back out again. I really should. I really enjoyed cross-stitching. Um, it was, it was, I, cross-stitching saved me during my pregnancy with Abby because I was bedridden. And so, cause cross-stitching cross takes me a long time. I don't know if it takes everybody else a long time, but like it would, it would be, you know, it could easily take me an hour to do a square inch, you know? So it could, it would, it, it would obviously depend on how many color changes, but, um, I enjoyed it so much. I found it so fulfilling and now I'm just like, I really want to just get it back out of here. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. I've got some projects that aren't finished <laughs> that I haven't touched in 18 years. Whoops. Um, yeah, believe it or not. All right. Uh, Natalie Power says, it's C to C. I'm on the decrease, so it'll go quicker each row. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, knitting looms are fun. Yes, they are. Uh Vampire is using purple tweed I got from Spotlight in a Millen's bag. The pattern is a simple repeat. I can almost do it in my sleep. Nice. I always worry about rugs because I don't have carpet floors. I've got all like um, vinyl floors. And so I always worry that rugs are just going to slip. And because I'm so funny, like I've got busted knees. And so if I even just slide a little bit, I freak out. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, awesome. Uh, Megan is working on granny square sunburst, granny square sunburst squares. Nice. I'm still working on my crochet ripple blanket. Also have knitted the cardi with a lace yoke on the go. Nice. Good morning, Sue. How are you going? Lots and lots happening. Lots and lots of projects on that go. Um, you know, I was so proud of myself that, you know, oh, I've finished this blanket. So, you know, I've, I've had a really fast start to the year. I finished off two Attic 24 blankets. So, and, and I did a cowl in the actual amount of time that was specified, which was so exciting and it felt so amazing. Uh, and then I've started this project, which I know will take a while because, you know, it's a blanket. It's not a queen, thank goodness. And it's not a full single, um, but it will still take a while, especially at seven or eight rows a week. Not this week, because we're going to change over to the fusion blanket. Um, but, um, yeah, so with only seven or eight rows a week, it's going to take some time to get through to where we, you know, where we're done. Um, I'm hoping that we do get it finished while it's cold so I can use it. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a little, that's a little goal. So we've got a few months because it's only just starting to cool down now. So where are we at? We're in May. We're on May the 4th. Um, so, um, 
yeah, it is. It feels weird because I'm used to saying 4th of May. So saying May the 4th, I have to think about it before I say it uh, because I say 4th of May. I'm not a May the 4th person. Um, like a, it's like in Australia, we are date first, then month. And so it feels a little bit alien switching it around. Uh, but for Star Wars, I will do it. I will do it for Star Wars. Um, let me have a look here. Jen Homewood has said, I am knitting the fold lines by Nora Gorn jumper. It's pretty, but it's seamed, so it's going to take a while. Yeah. But the thing with the seam jumpers I found is they hold their shape better. Is that just me? Am I the only one who's noticed that? Like, I love, like, knitting a jumper in the round just for the ease and the speed, right? Love it. But I find that seamed garments tend to hold their shape better. Is that, like... Is it just because I'm making larger ones that need, you know, more fabric? Or is that a, is that a common thing? I'm not sure. Let me know in the chat. Um, Sue's making a dishcloth with Claire's mosaic pattern. I thought the texture would make a good scrubby cloth. Yeah, depending on what you make it out of, it totally could. Absolutely. Um, so this week I've started pre-recording videos again for this channel. So keep your eyes peeled still going to edit them they're not ready yet but they're going I'm back into this I'm getting back into the swing um I had planned to record another one this afternoon I probably won't if my nose stays like this uh like it's just a little off-putting a little off-putting um so yeah it's frustrating it's so frustrating um Sally says may the fourth be with you there we go I'm, I'm going to try and do it each time you guys mention it. I really am. Um, I'm still on my fourth Hayfield cabled jumper. Nice. Cables take longer. Like, that's the thing, right? You've got to, there's more work. But gosh, you end up with an, a beautiful thing at the end, right? Like, you just do. You just do. Um, we're nearly at the end of this row. That's exciting. Uh, yeah. I'm, pr I'm pretty happy about that. I'm pretty happy about that. So we've got 28 viewers and only 16 likes. So I'm guessing that, you know, some of you aren't liking what we do here. That's well, fair enough. That's cool. You're allowed to not like it. Um, I just, I had to convince my husband that May the 4th was a thing. He just looked at me like I was making it up. Oh my gosh. He just needs to hit Google for five seconds. Tell him to go to Twitter. Like seriously. But I mean, the reality is it's May the 4th here for us. So most of the May the 4th content will be out tomorrow for us because, or later tonight, because, you know, other time zones will catch up. Um, yeah, show the hubby the internet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for sure. May the 4th is a legit thing. Like, do you know how hard it was to, for me to find my May the 4th graphic? It was not hard. It was not hard. Like, I set that up five minutes before the stream. I'm like, should I make a May the 4th thing? And I really wanted, like, some Stormtrooper music or something like that. But that's, like, that was a bit too close to copyright problems. And I was struggling to find something from a reputable site. So I went with I went with um, speeders instead. Speeders are awesome, and I was trying to hit mute, not May the. There we go. All right, we are on to. A pink row. So remove that. Remove that. And go back to that. There we go. All right. Now this pink has still got a yarn baby. So we've got to work around that. So look at this. It still has a yarn baby. Because we're onto a new ball of pink. Um, oh, I thought it was a mess chewy growl. No, it, it's a... It's like a speeder, like a land speeder sort of thing. Although, you know what I could have done? I could have taken a video of how my coffee machine sounds and grabbed the audio from that. 
because I've stood there sometimes and I'm convinced it sounds like sounds from Star 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 Wars. Um uh, I noticed the stitch markers you shared with us have sold out. Um so popular. So Eleven T One Windmills um has some Star Wars themed stitch markers. Sounds like not many are left. Um, so if you want to go over and hit 11T1 Windmills' website, I, I don't know what that is off the top of my heart. So it's 111 Windmills, and I don't know if it's a .com or a .com.au, um, but she definitely, she had some of the cute, I was so tempted. I was so tempted, and but I've just bought like stuff. So I'm like, I, I, you know, I really wanted them, but I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. So I didn't do it. And I feel like I kind of missed out because I jumped in and I could have bought whichever ones I wanted. And now that I know that they're sold out, I definitely have some FOMO. Um, I, I read this hilarious thing. Speaking of FOMO, I read this hilarious thing yesterday and it was about FOMO. And it's like, you know, more of us need to have ROMO, which is relieved on missing out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and instill some of that, and then you know this happens. So that's legit FOMO. Oh, Sally, thank you so much for grabbing that link. So 111windmills.com. I've got some of her stitch markers. I think they're so cute, and you can choose between lobster claws and hexes. Um, I had some. I was using some the other day. What did I do with them? What did I do with it? I know where they are. Hang on one second. Bear with. And I've just realized I've had my headphones on the whole time and I don't need my headphones on. Someone could have said something. <laughs> okay. Oh, where's the other pack? I've got two packs of her. Okay. In saying that, though, it meant I got to hear the land speeders and stuff like that. All right. So I've got these ones, which were her um, paper, scissors, rock, lizard, Spock uh, stitch markers. And I got those on lobster claws. And she uses the really big lobster claws. So that's awesome there. Um, but I also got her angry birds on the hexes. So there, like, there's an ibis. Um, and there was like a kookaburra. There was like five or six of them, but I've got them to, I've, I've got some use in a project. Hey, hello, cute little scissors. I'll have you. There's another one. The rest are in another project, I think, because there were like five or six of those as well. Um, and they're so super lightweight, which I really love. The plastic ones are a little heavier, but the little, the little, I'm going to say wood. I don't know. Um, but the little wood mean birds, they are super lightweight. I think part of it comes down to as well, the hex is way lighter than the lobster claw. Um, so, yeah. But she makes really cute stuff, honestly. And so totally worth going to check out as well. Um, and she brings out little bits and pieces like for things like um, Star Wars Day and stuff like that. So, you know, if you've got a favourite, a favorite thing um yeah Natalie Powell they are a, a Big Bang reference um with Bazinga as well so um you know it's it's definitely um it's definitely one of those sort of things I'm just gonna see if I can there we go um that yeah it is definitely it's definitely um cute and I like how she puts things together and she just makes a good product and you know, I'm gonna support anyone who makes a good. Pro I'm keeping those little scissors out, man. I lost. I thought they were gone. I thought I lost them. Um, where are we at for time? Okay, we're doing great. We're doing great. Because I do want to change over to the fusion blanket now that you guys have told me that I can change over to the fusion blanket. Um, but I, you know, I do want to get a few rows of this done as well. Um, yeah. Oh, you've just gone down a loom knitting. Um. A loom knitting rabbit hole on Amazon. Oh my gosh. Um, Freaky says, only I prefer the claws as I would forget and knit them in, but not lock them um, and knit them in, but not lock them. Well, the, the thing is when you're knitting, you slide it from one needle to the next. Um, whereas, you know, with crochet, if you crochet your, your stitch marker and it's not, you can't open it, that's in there forever. That is now a feature.
So, yeah, that's some of the advantages of the different types. Um, I like the lobster claws so that I can also use them for things like this. The lobster claws are great for attaching your stitch markers to other stuff. So if you found a stitch marker that you love and it's on a lobster claw, you can totally put it in your zips. I wonder if, let me just check if these big lobster claws work for that because I've, I've not tried the big lobster claws. I think they might. I think they might. Let's, let's just pop this cutie off. Come on, little cutie with your little lobster claw. Let's get a giant lobster claw on there. Just see if, yeah, it totally works. It totally fits. Cool. Because I was just like, oh, wait a second. I'm about to say something. I should find out. Uh, is three eighth gauge finer than one quarter gauge? I don't know the answer to that. I want to say yes, but I don't know off the top of my head. That's a Google question. I would, I would Google for the answer of that question. Um, I have been, go, speaking of going down rabbit holes on Amazon, I've been going down the rabbit hole of blocking boards for blocking squares because I'm thinking about making a project that has lots of squares. Well, actually, I, want, I do want to do it for my fusion blanket first, um, which has about seven inch squares on it. And so I want to get one of those cool blocking boards with the with the pins where you can stack it up tall so you can do like a ton at once because um, I've got to do 80 and like there's another blanket that I want to do that has like 120 squares and I do like to block my squares before I join if I can um, and this would make life a bit easier I think. I think it would make life a bit easier, but I'm just so torn. Like there's so many options when it comes to those boards with the pre-drilled holes that you just put the things in. There's one that I'm looking at and it's got, they've done it so that I think it's every inch there's a hole. So they've got this big board and then every square inch, each corner has a hole. So it doesn't matter what size or shape, well, it'll... <laughs> depending on the shape, but it'll, it'll accommodate a lot more sizes and shapes, if that makes any sense. Like if you've got a little hexagon, you could actually, depending on the size of the hexagon, you could possibly even still block it. Um, whereas some of them are like squares only, only squares allowed. But yeah, it's, it's not, they're not inexpensive. They're not inexpensive. I was seriously considering going to Bunnings, buying a chunk of wood, right? A big chunk of wood, grabbing my Cricut, printing out a grid of one inch squares that was 12 inches or even 11 inches because the Cricut may not cope with 12 <clears throat> and um, put that on the board and use that as a guide and drill little holes in. And I was so tempted just to go and do that. But then I'm like, do I really want, oh my gosh, Josephine, thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Wow, I appreciate you. I wasn't even thinking. Um, I've been looking at the same thing and don't know what to get. There's so many options. I'm he heading towards the board with the holes. Yeah, me too, me too. Um, my alarm just went off to tell me that you're going live at 11. Oh, you need to fix that alarm. Yeah, great spot, Josephine. Great spot. Um, I have a board which allows all sizes and shapes. I'll post a photo in the fun zone. Molly, if you could post a link to where we could buy it, that would be amazing. Um, definitely interested. I am... am seriously looking at it because one of the reasons I tend to make blankets like this is because then I don't feel the urge to block all the individual pieces but if I make blankets that are, that have got individual pieces I block the pieces before I join them so that I can so it looks nicer right and don't come at me like I'm not telling everybody else they have to do it but that's just what I prefer to do it gives me neater edges neater joins I just think it looks nicer, at least for me, okay? Um, I know there's some of you out there that never block, have never blocked in your 60 plus years of crocheting and knitting. 
Um, I, I think, I think that you have blocked. You just didn't know it was called blocking, but you know, I'm not going to get into that argument right now. Um, but yeah, oh, Josephine, thank you for saving me. Like that would have really upset me if I had gotten all the way to the other end. Um, I got it from a buy from the bush supplier. Okay. So does that mean that we may not be able to get it now and that it was a once off? Because if, because if so, that's going to make me sad. That'll make me sad. Um, I'll, I'll legit understand that they can't do it all the time, but it will make me sad if I can't get one. So uh, for those of you that don't know what a buy from the bush supplier is, there was um, a couple of years back, was it after the bushfires? I, I think it was after the bushfires. Um, a lot of farmers were really struggling and they and a lot of them have an alternate product that they would sell in their local towns and things like that, like crafts and thing, and soap making and metalworking and you know, like when they had spare time from the farm, they would um, they would, you know, be creative in some way. And there was this amazing movement that got all these guys online. And in some, some of them, it was just, um, you know, as part of a co-op kind of thing, but it got these products out further reaching where people could find them. And it meant that these farmers who were, were totally burnt out and had to wait until their farms could be re-sown, um, had income and could feed their families. So um, it was, you know, definitely a, an amazing and a w wonderful sort of initiative that happened. Uh, speaking of fun zone, do you, no, I actually popped one in, uh, believe it or not. Oh, it, maybe it was the drought. Yeah, it, it could have been the drought. Um, it could have been the drought because, yeah, the, it was it was a natural disaster. I remember it was some sort of natural disaster that they had zero control over. And, you know, when farmers can't farm, they don't get to eat or feed their families either. So, yeah. So it's not only us city dwellers who can't hit woolies and grab what they need, the farmers aren't able to sell anything to woolies or, or coals or whoever they sell it to. Or the manufacturers of the products, whatever you guys know. Um, oh, the, the bush is what we call a forest. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that an Australian thing, is it? The, the, where we're like, oh, out bush, you know, so in the wilderness. So it's not always, it's not always like dense and tree. But it's it's it could be scrubby and and just wildernessy, but yeah, it's definitely um out there. It's out away from the city. A bush has different meanings in other places. Okay, thank you for that, Claire. I appreciate you jumping in and clarifying that up a bit. Um, John O'Brien is back. He had to pop out. Well, John, thank you for coming back. I appreciate that. Out in the sticks is another one. Yep, absolutely. A whoop whoop. <laughs> that one will th really throw. It's like, oh, that's out whoop whoop. Um, uh, it's also what we call, yeah, rural areas, like where farms are and, you know. I don't even know where whoop whoop came from. Oh, that's whoop whoop. Like if someone's like says to me, oh, can you drive to the north side for something? I'm like, I don't want to drive to whoop whoop. <laughs> So it's like, it's like a long way. Sue Singleton says, for me, it's home. Fair enough, Sue. Fair enough. I've See, my family are coastal. They, My dad, like when it, we, we lived in a lot of places, but my dad is obsessed with the sea. So being, you know, he was a fisherman and a trawlerman, so kind of needed it. So we didn't do much bush living, but he grew up in St. George. So we used to go to St. George a bit for family stuff and charleville and things like that so that's 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 pretty far out in the sticks um sally says according to my family i live out in the sticks i don't i just live the furthest away yeah i get it sal i get it we're coming up to the end of the row we're gonna do another dice roll soon so excited so excited. Am I the only one who gets excited when it's time to dice roll? Because I'm like hanging for an eight, you guys. I set up so much cool, fun stuff for eights. And I've not been able to press any of the buttons yet. Like I made things, I made buttons to press when we get an eight. 
I made I made a, a website thing where you guys can go and vote. And and all this stuff, all these things, and we have not used it yet. <sighs> like, I actually tweeted about it. I'm like, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds that, you know, we haven't had an eight yet? I mean, we've only had one. Have we had two ones now? We have. We've had two ones now. But we've only had, we've had zero eights. And we're using multiple dice, so it's not the dice. Yeah, it's a D8 freaky. There are no 12s. It'd be really weird if we've rolled a 12 before we rolled an 8. That's all I can say. That would be very, very weird. Although, you know, like we haven't rolled an 8. So maybe a 12 will come before an 8. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my goodness. I'm just trying to think where my fusion blanket is. I know where it is. I've, I've just had a visual image of where it's sitting. It's in a bag inside a crate out next to my couch. Um, what happens if you run out of a color? That's a great question, Stacey. So based on my mathery do's, which grain of salt, everybody, grain of salt, we should only technically get about halfway through most balls, right? Um, so we should be fine, but if we do happen to run out of a color, we will just make that color that make it like, if we roll it, it's a reroll. So if we run out of a color and we don't have that color anymore, it's a reroll. So, um, that's, that was the, that's my plan for that. Hydrate. Good point. Good point. Let's hydrate. She just orders more. No, no, she doesn't. Although I'm saying that, I may have to order more pink because we've st now started the second ball of pink and I, di I did some mathing. We've got enough to do the blanket, but we may not have enough to do the border. Um, we might, because I can't, I don't know how much yarn the border will use. There will be yarn left over to start the border, but I don't know how much there will be. Um... Yeah, I'm sure you like Sal's answer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I mean, I could just order more, I suppose. I mean, but then we'd have to wait for it to arrive before we could do it. And I've my orders from Maker seem to take about a week and a half to get here. Speaking of order, oops. Oh, oh, nearly went on a little little single crochet adventure. Um, my maker handbag arrived today or tote bag, whatever she calls it, the black, not, not today. It arrived this week. Um, so it's out in the lounge room getting some air and I've filled it with towels to shape it. So yeah. Uh, freaky, you are right. Um, the only color, like we have used all of the colors now. Um, the only number we have not rolled is an eight for our, um, voting option. That's it. Um, how do I, how do I like it? How do I like this yarn? Is that what you're asking Leanne? Or how do I like the bag? I haven't used the bag yet. Um, look, you guys know I'm pretty fussy with stuff and I have got a really heightened sense of smell and it came with a, a, a slightly funny smell to it. So I needed to give it some airing out time. I was sniffing it yesterday and it seems to just about be all good now. So it just needs maybe another day or two to air out a bit more. Uh, because I, it's, it's just a thing. I, I've, yeah, I don't, I don't like the smell of some vinyls and it's one of the vinyls that has the smell. So it'll, it'll wear out. It'll wear off. Oh, John, the bag. Uh, yeah, Leanne says the bag. We have got member chats over here, which I, can I bring them? I can. Hello. 17 months of membership. Excellent. So I'm not in uh, StreamYard, so I can bring over the member chats, but I wish they were green. It's not green. Sorry, John. Um, and Sal has also dropped hers. She's got 18 months of membership. You guys are phenomenal. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much for your support and for being channel members. 
making it so that I can order in yarn for projects like this. Um, I just love it. Vampire, part of the coffee clutch, is also here for 17 months. I just got to wait for it to come across to the software. There it is. Uh, Vampire is celebrating her 17 months as well. You guys know that when you post those, you can actually post in, like there's a spot for you to put a comment as well. You can, well, where John wrote 17. Um, you can, you get to add in like a, a highlighted super chat. So you can, anyone who's a channel member, if you've been a member for over a month, you, if you click, if you look down the bottom of the stream, there's a little dollar sign, like a little rectangular note. If you click that, it'll tell you if you've got a free super chat available. And you can totally put a comment in it as well, if you want. It's your call. And it'll appear in the great, in the big green box in the live chat. Um, <laughs> well, if Claire's not going to, I will. Claire, don't even mention your number one membership position. Okay, we know already. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Claire and Leanne had a race to see who could be number one and Claire won. Um, sorry, sorry. Leanne is number 1.5 member. <laughs> um, I can't tell you who member two is. I'm, I'm sure I knew at one stage, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Only because Leanne reminds me. So thank you for the reminders, Leanne. I appreciate you. Um. He says, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Seems that you're not. Seems that it's not playing on your mind at all, ever. Um, I've just realized, don't have your elbows on the table and laugh. Shakes the camera. So let's not do that again. Or try not to do that again. Alrighty, we are at the end of this row. It is time for a dice roll. So let me just clean this up, get rid of, like we're still, there's still a bit of yarn bath left, but it's really like one more row should fix that. Although there's, looks like more yarn bath is going to come out of the ball. So that's exciting. Um, all right, let's, let's get ready to rumble. It's dice roll. It's dice time. roll. Dice roll. Time. Roll the dice to choose the next color. Okay. I've got my pen and paper ready. We've rolled the six with that dice. Um, alrighty, let's, let's see what we get. It's a five. We have a five. So five is parrot, I think. There we go. Five is parrot. So we have got the red, which it actually blends into the pink a lot. And we haven't, we haven't had a lot of the parrot. So I'll just move you back over there. Bring that over. Yeah, I wish it was an eight. Nitspin Girl wants a three. Look, we all know what Nitspin Girl's going to vote for. Oops, it's. I will say. As I'm warming up, my head is clearing a little. The nose blowing is happening less and there's less sneezing. So I am hopeful. I am hopeful that it's just a morning cold air thing. Hopeful. Okay, so let's get the red on. And I get to single crochet all the way across for this one. Um, Molly's got to head out and do worky things. Molly, have a good day. We'll catch you next time. Um... Charlie needs walking. See you later, Claire. Have an awesome time with Charlie. Louis just chilling. Louis chilling. I have no idea where Macy is. She's probably asleep somewhere. She's she's been finding sunny spots. So, yeah. Because she's a cat, and cats always find the sun rays. Okay. So let's get through here. We've got the two dice. I should write down the five because we may only get the two colours today. What did it be at for time? Yeah, we're only going to get two colours if I'm going to go out and grab the fusion blanket for Star Wars Day. Mm. 
We're changing projects midstream. We haven't done that for a while. Oh, John, Macy is our new cat. We have a new kitten. She's um, a little ginger ninja um, and she is nine weeks old. We picked her up on Friday. I think it was Friday. And um, yeah. No, Thursday. We picked her up Thursday. That's right. Oh, I have a member chat message. Josephine, thank you for the reminder. Hang on a second. Where is it? There it is. Celebrates 80 months. I need vanilla Pepsi Max. Hurry up, husband. <laughs> oh, no. Vanilla Pepsi? What? I mean, it's got to be better than standard Pepsi, I would, I would assume. Goodness me. I'm not a Pepsi fan. But I'm not a Coke fan either. So, But if I'm going to drink one, I do tend to drink Coke, funnily enough. I heard that they're gross. I, I don't know. I've got... Oh, hang on. Um, oh, yeah, Peeps. I've heard about Peeps, like the actual like candy. I've heard they're gross too. But I hear that, like, I've, every... Pretty well, just about every American candy I've had um, are not... Awesome. Sorry. They're just really, really, really sweet. I mean, I know that's kind of the point, but yeah. Uh, yeah, John, female ginger. Like I had a female ginger Abyssinian when I was a teenager and she was my favorite cat in the entire wide world. Sorry, Tibble. Sorry, Jazzy. Sorry, all my other cats that I've had ever since. Um, and ever since I've always wanted another female ginger and it's really hard to find them. And now this one's not pure ginger. She does have um, a, some white on her belly and on her legs, but she still has ginger spots on her tummy. I'm going to go and get her. I'm going to go and drag her onto camera so you can see her. And also I'm getting concerned because she's quiet and that, that could mean, that could mean anything. So when I go out to grab the fusion blanket, I'll also grab Macy for a quick visit. Um, we had to, she, she's not afraid of anything because she's a kitten. Kittens aren't afraid of anything. She just climbs and climbs and climbs. Like I had to come and rescue her from the, the absolute top of the top shelf. Like I've got shelving units that have got tops on them and there's like this gap between the top shelf and the ceiling. She ended up in there. She'd climbed up the shelving units like a ladder and um, I had to go and get a ladder to get her out. She's like, oh, thanks. And then just went to climb straight back up again. I'm like, yeah, nah, 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 out, 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 out. So, um, yeah, quiet kittens are suspicious. Legit, legit. Um, just realized I didn't put my phone on mute, so I'm just going to fix that. Um, there we go. It's just Abby. I'd sent Abby a photo earlier of Tibbles and not Tibbles of Macy and Louise sitting in a chair together like basically leaning on each other which they haven't done yet um and she was like yeah they totes hate each other <laughs> um oh Louis did you move big boy he's there he's there but yeah ginger females are hard to find they're really hard to find um and Abby messaged me on Thursday saying, hey, look at this place. They've got two ginger females that they're trying to rehome. Can we please, please, please have one? Um, they're really inexpensive. They're already de-sexed and vaccinated and, you know, wormed and kitty litter trained and, and all the things I actually hate about having a cat that was already done. So she's totally litter trained already, which I just love. Um, and I, I just went, okay. And Abby was like, wait, what? <laughs> like okay it was just like the price was good everything was already done um all my usual like oh it's five hundred dollars to desex a female cat you know and this cat did not cost five hundred dollars she was only a couple of hundred um and so all the normal you know things that I'm like Abby you know it's too expensive we can't really afford another pet right now we're still paying off Louis's life-saving surgeries but this one's had all its things done so far like unless something dramatic happens which may well happen if she keeps living her life the way she does she's a lunatic um but yeah it was perfect timing 
Sue has a ginger ninja called Sheldon. Yeah, good good name, good name. Um, yeah, maybe she is being a good kitten, sleeping in a sunny spot somewhere. I will soon find out. Um, Sally's cat is ginger as well. He's naughty. Sally's cat is naughty. He's adorable, but he's naughty. Um, I actually quite like naughty cats. That when we were talking to the the clinic about which of the kittens to choose, because we got to cuddle them both, and they were both quite sleepy, so we didn't really get to see much personality. Um, the lady's like, "Oh, hang on, I've got a video of them earlier," and one of them was going crazy, like running under the little blanket and poking her paw out and attacking the other kittens in the cage. And we're like, "Yeah, we want that one." <laughs> Let's, so we chose the naughty kitten, you know, like we always go for the pet with the extra, extra personality. It, it suits, suits the vibe of our house, you know, like everyone's quiet for a while, recharging their batteries and then all of a sudden it's chaos and then it's quiet again and then it's chaos. So basically what I'm saying is we're all cats here. We're all cats. Um, also, I too like finding a sunny spot. And, and just putting my feet up and having a nap in the sunny spot. So I'm probably part cat. Um, let me have a look here. I've missed some comments. Uh, I had a ginger ninja named Hedwig. Oh, that's cute. And Megan has a ginger ninja called Axel. My daughter calls him Chicken Nugget. Um, Abby calls him, uh, calls, not him, her. Abby calls Macy um, a ranger which is a very Australian term for a redhead. Um, I call her the Velociraptor. Um, Abby's now started calling her the Velociranger. So there's a, like, I don't know, can you see all the marks, like, on my arm where she's been getting me? Like, I'm not sure if they're quite showing up, but they're a bit stingy. They're a bit stingy. Um, she just plays hard with her little tiny kitten claws, you know? And she tries to climb my arm for some reason. Um, Hedwig had an angry inch. He predated the hour. Oh, really? That's cool. I like that. You, like, because I, I think it's always fun. Like, you know, when we name our things after something that we love. But I think it's even better when it's a show that you love or something. And then you realize that you've already got like a 10 year old pet named that. And it's new. Uh, my ginger ninja is Ingo, but the Zoomy girls renamed him Marmalade. We did, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know how, how do we even, like, how did that happen? How do we rename your cat? I can't even remember, like, how it became a thing. Did we just start going, the you know, that one, the Marmalade one? Or was was it like a no? And, and I'm sorry that we've renamed your cat because um, <laughs> it's, I just feel like, you know, maybe we were a bit rude, but maybe not. Maybe there's a story and I can't remember the story because it's been a long time since we started those Zoom calls. It's been a long time. All righty. We are nearly at the end of this row. Let me, we're nearly there. Oops. That is not the spot for the stitch. There it is there. Ingo is an Ikea table. Is it really? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's pretty big. You could confuse him for a coffee table. He's a giant Olmo cat. I'm kind of hoping that Macy's going to be a little cat, but I can never tell. Like Tibbles was supposed to be a small cat and his mum was tiny. Like we picked him from the litter and he's like this giant mountain lion. So, yeah. Um, I think Josephine was calling him Marmalade and it just stuck and I didn't correct you because I thought it was cute. Okay. All right. Well, as long as there's no offense in there, I'm cool with it. But yeah, I didn't realize he had a... I thought his name was Marmalade and I thought it was weird that he had a boy cat called Marmalade. Um, whoops. I didn't know he had like another name. Far out. Uh, I should get a badge that just says bad friend. <laughs> but no, that's kind of funny. That is kind of funny. So how did you get Ingo? Like, what's what was the thinking? Like, because I've not heard the word before. John has. I haven't. Um, yeah. <laughs> All righty. I'm, I'm, like, nervous about finding out what the cat's up to. Um, but I'll bring her in. And I'll grab my fusion blanket. I think I've got some squares there that could still use a border. 
I got a few done over the last few days. So, um, cause I realized like if you saw my Instagram post, I thought I only had about 10 squares left to go. Like they needed, um, they needed blanket stitching and, um, and then they're edging on it. But what I didn't realize is I also had an entire pile that I had done the blanket stitching on, but didn't have crochet edges on. So out of my 80, I had like 45 with edges and another like 15 or 16 with the blanket stitching, but no edges. But, and then it turns out there was another 15 or 16 that needs blanket stitching. But like, I'm like, should I just make the blanket smaller? So I don't need those. Cause I really hate the blanket stitching and that's what's slowing everything down. Cause I think what it was, was I was like, okay, I'm not crocheting any more edges until I've done this blanket stitching. And I think that's what happened. Whereas now I'm trying to minimize the piles. And so, yeah, it's, um, it's still got a ways to go. There's still a ways to go. I thought I was much closer to done. I'm not. Um, Hubby named him after a football player called Anthony Ingerson, Ingo for short. Oh, there you go. He has got a proper name and a historical name. So we should call him Ingo because that's his name. Um, there we go. All righty. Pop that in there. I'm going to head off and go and find the scary cat. Find out what she's up to. I don't know. I don't have a, I don't have a be right back here. I really should set one up, but I don't have one in this software. So um, I'm just going to mute the microphone and head off and I'm just going to move this yarn out of the way. But we've got two colors done. And, uh, and now I'm going to go and grab another project. Squish in there. All righty, you guys, I'll be back. Okay, here she is. This is Macy. She's going to attack the microphone now. So she's got lots of ginger, but she's also got a ginger and white tummy. Hello, Louie. I know, she's your friend and she's up on a table. Um, can you guys hear her purr? Yeah, she was. She was asleep on Louie's bed out in the lounge room. Did you stop purring? Hey, did you stop purring? There we go. That was muted. Sorry. Oh, you guys could hear the purring? Yeah. She's got a very loud purr. Okay, she's off to attack Louis now. She's like looking at him over the edge. Louis, look up. <laughs> Louis, she's coming for you. Oh, careful of the microphone, sweet pea. Come on. I'll put you down. There you go. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye. All right. There you go. No, she's off. She's out of here. All right. Uh, I'm trying to find, there we go, trying to find the things to remove all the stuff off screen. All right, let's 
to put that hook over there so I do not lose it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, uh, she was 990 grams when we got her. Um, so, yeah, under a kilo. Um, so what have we got? So this in this bag, I've these are the only finished squares I've got here. The rest are all over in a shelf. Um, but this is out of the 16 that I had to do. There's this many that I've done. So we can keep working with those. But we also have... This many that still need blanket stitching. Well, that one's halfway done. Um, so, yeah, there's stills up. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Alrighty, back in there. In the blanket bag you go. Alright, so now we have a May the 4th project for Star Wars Day. We can have a few of them around. So you can have our Star Wars theme. There we go. Alrighty. Um, and I have started this one. So am I in the middle of the ball? I am. Alright. Back to the chat. I'm going to go and see what you guys all were talking about. Um, big yawn. Yeah, she was totally napping. Lots of purring. Oh, she's very loud. She's very loud. Uh, you remember Ingo being that cute? I remember I remember Tibbles, oh sorry, being that little. I remember Tibbles being that little as well. Yeah. Ah uh, yeah. I've got the the fabric is great. It was so good. Love a baby anything. Yeah, me too. Um two pounds, three ounces. Thank you for that. So yeah. Um she is she's tiny. She's tiny. Um You should put your May the 4th hoot set. We could do that. There you go. Um, that could just live there. That's that's all right. I can move this guy down to this corner. Move them up there. Have some there. Flip that over. There we go. Look at all our Star wars -ing. We're Star wars -ing all over the place. All right. Let me just hydrate. Oh, she's totally cute. She's very naughty. She's very adorable, but naughty. Um, so this is a, it's called the Crochet Fusion Blanket. So Francis has just asked the question, what is this project? This is what's called the Fusion. I think they call it the Tea Fusion Project. They use pretty floral fabrics. That's, that's not me. I'm not into the floral fabrics. And I had this amazingly huge um, fat quarters pack um of all star wars fabrics that were from um when the original ray movie came out when the force was it the force awakens i think it was the force awakens um oh yeah yeah force awakens it's written right there like 11 times um and i got this phenomenal like all these amazing fabrics just in all different color like just all different things and I had I think it was 21 fat quarters of of some of them were like the same thing but in different colors and stuff like that but I really enjoyed it and then I picked up um, some matching fabric to go with the colors so I've got some orange and some red as well um, so that I could spread it out a little because I, I didn't have quite enough to make the size blanket I wanted and I was looking at it my Ravelry queue and I think I've, I started it um, in 2020, I think. I'd have to check. Um, but yeah, Sally, thank you for putting the link. Um, appreciate that. This is the way, this is the May. Yes, it is. This is the May. Um, I have to go out and hang some washing. Um, awesome. I'll see you when you get back. Joy, good. It's great to see you. Good to see you make it, made it here as well. Um, and thank you, Sally, for popping the link in, the High Tea Crochet Fusion Quilt. Um, look, the instructions are pretty good. They're, I think there's some areas that are a little... I'm going to go with grey. But look, we've managed. 
and, and I think it was probably gray because sewing is not my first craft. Like it was, there was some stuff that I was just like, what, what's going on? Did I, I think I'm working on the wrong side of this, but that's fine. I'm, I'm doing it now. Uh, no, I can't. flip it over and try again it would do my head in so basically some people when they're blanket stitch blanket stitch perfectly I don't I'm not sure if you could see it see how some of mine actually just go just a little over the line that that's that's going to do my head in um so I have to I have to blanket stitch on the right side are you well I am mostly well I have noticed that this morning I woke up and the cold air has given my nose a run for its money. So um, I've got a little bit of a sniffle. But as the day progresses on, it feels like it's doing less, if that makes sense. So fingers are crossed that it's just an early morning cold weather thing. Because it's lovely and cool here today. Like I've got, I've got long pants on. I've got a long sleeve shirt on. I'm in all my comfy stuff. I'm happy. I'm like content. And after live streams on a Thursday, I tend to chill a little bit because then, you know, we have caffeinated crafters. So, oh, sorry, I'll bring that, bring that under. Um, so, yeah, so, but uh, yarn-wise, what I've been using is it's a four-ply Bendigo cotton in, I want to say, Glacier. I think I actually have, I think I have a, bu a bull tack. It is four ply cotton in glacier. Look at that. I actually kept one. That's rare. Um, any plans to go to Bendigo this year? No, no plans for Bendigo this year, unfortunately. Um, Fiberific no longer runs a stall. So it does make it harder to go to some of these events. Um, I, oh, in saying, like you've just reminded me, I still have some stock available um, and it's still all 30% off. Or 40% off? What is it? I can't remember. One of the two. I should probably look at that. Um, until it's sold out. So if you're after clover hooks, chow goo knitting needles. If you are a bamboo big, uh, bamboo interchangeable user, there are a ton of different tips there still. Um, no cables left. Uh, there's a few things that are totally sold out. But lots and lots still there for you to have a good squeeze at. Um, I do want to get down to Bendigo just to go and hang out, but I'm not going to be able to do that this year. So maybe next year for that one. Because um, I miss all my Bendigo buddies, all my stallholder friends that I made over the 10 years that I was going. It was 10 years? Feels like it was 10 years. It may not have been quite 10 years. It was a long time. Um, but yeah, so if you want to check that out. Now, the other thing is, I know that some of you had had problems with my website over the last few weeks. Fingers are crossed, but I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. Um, so there's it look it might look a little different because I had to change some stuff around, but um, it is working and the pages load fairly quickly. Um, uh, Game Widows, yes, is going to have a new um, product line that she's um, releasing at Bendigo. So if you're going to Bendigo, you need to hunt down her stall um, because you are going to squeal and swoon because I've seen it. I'm not going to lie. I've seen it. It's squeal and swoon worthy and you will totally want it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say that. Um, but you can't get it until Bendigo. So, yeah, there's also that. I would love to be there, Jai. I'd love to be there at Bendigo. It's such an awesome event. If you can make it down to Bendigo in July, you should totally go. Seriously, if you're a yarn crafter and you haven't done Bendigo and you can travel or it's near you. I, I know of people that live near Bendigo and hadn't been. They're like, oh, really? Is it worth going to? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is worth going to. You need to go. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. Sometimes people don't know about it until they're told about it. I mean, I still talk to people at Spotlight who've never heard of Ravelry. So, and they're like, it's not new. Ravelry is not new. Um, so, yeah. We're going around and around. 
working into all the beautiful stitches that I did. We're calling them beautiful stitches. Don't judge my blanket stitching. My blanket stitching is terrible. I understand this. It's fine. Um, it's doing its job. It's fine. <laughs> uh, um, look at all this May the 4th branding and then all these fabrics. It's kind of cool. Um, bye, Vampia. Have an awesome day. Uh, my friend loves a, lives a block away from the showgrounds and didn't know about it. Oh, my gosh. That's changed now, right? You've, you've remedied, remedied that situation. Your blanket stitching is fine. Thank you, Francis. I appreciate you saying that. Look, it does the job, hey. And I've got and I've got the right number of stitches usually. Sometimes I didn't I didn't understand the importance of getting the right number, but now I do. Um Oops, hang on. This row is different. I just need change. Sorry, I just have to think for a little second. been a minute since I've done the shell and I just need to double check I'm doing the right thing okay all right I think that's right yes okay Hang on. I just got to move this because that's supposed to be there further there we go and that makes more sense as to why I'm doing the stitch there. Okay. All good. It's all good. Um. I missed something in the chat. Hang on. Just let me just get this corner in and then I will check the chat. Okay, corner is in. Let me just look at it. Yep, it's fine. Okay. Um, uh, there's another part of the crafting community I love sharing all the knowledge we learn. Absolutely. Oh, I love how you've lined up one of, you know, I wish I could say that was intentional. It it wasn't, but there we go. Let's just make that schmicko. Or actually, let's let's go one better. Let's get something with some orange in it. <laughs> There we go. No, not enough. We'll go this one because it's got red. There we go. <laughs> Shh, you guys. I know, okay? I know how silly it is, but I'm doing it anyway. I'll put this one over here. Here we go. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Uh, just went and grabbed some wool and a hook. The question is beanie or scarf. I like Sally's answer. Why not both? What do you feel like? Do you feel like you're in a scarf frame of mind or do you feel like you're in a beanie frame of mind? Um, if you just need a quick win, I would go beanie personally. I love my new mute button. I just need to tell you that. I love the new mute button. I'm glad I put it in and I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. Oh, I know why I didn't do it sooner. I thought I was just going to be using this software temporarily um, for live streaming because I'm a StreamYard girl, but I'm really becoming an Ecamm girl, honestly. I really like using Ecamm. And stream I think StreamYard's better for guests, but I really like Ecamm for the like overlays and and doing the fun things and the extra music and all the sound effects that I can have. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's bonuses. I think when StreamYard make it so that you can have more than one audio source, that's when I will be like, oh, hang on a second. But right now you can only have one audio source. And they're like, oh, you can put it in this section. No, I don't want it there. I want to be able to control it. Sorry, that's a dumb spot. Pick a different spot. So, yeah. 
and I've been using, I've been finding that I've been using it in, even in Zoom and stuff like that, like bringing it in as a virtual camera because I can control, like I can zoom in and out on like in the software rather than having to lean over to the camera and deal. I mean, like I could be like, woo, woo, you know, like, and I can move things around like while it's live. So if I need to quickly throw something in, I've got the ability to, you know, and it's not that EK, uh, it's not that StreamYard aren't bringing in some cool adjustability stuff. They really are. This is different. Also, Ecamm isn't Mac only, just so everybody knows. It is Mac only, whereas StreamYard's for everybody, which is one of the things I love about StreamYard. So, yeah. Just make sure I'm doing the right stuff here. On my fusion blanket. Almost bathing suit season for John. Well, we are moving out of bathing suit season. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to sniffle. It's a pet peeve of mine, so I try not to do it to others. Yeah, onto another corner. Wood, wood. One thing I'll say about these squares is they are like, it's like fast. Um, like, oh, I finished a thing really quickly. Um, what's the word for that? There's a word. I can't think of it. Where it's like, it's not quite instant gratification, but it's pretty close. And, you know, like, ah, oh, tick, done another one. Tick, done another one. Um, whereas with the blanket, you're like, oh yeah, I finished another row, but it's still ages off from looking like anything. I'll have to make sure I've got an, enough blanket stitched squares to take to Cafe Data Crafters tonight and actually work on a project, which would be novel. I don't normally work on much while I'm at Cafe Data Crafters. I'm going to get a little drink of water and hydrate. I hope you're all keeping hydrated while we are working away here and you're stopping and stretching. Because I don't want any injuries. It felt nice to actually get up and go and get the kitty. I would hazard a guess that she's gone back out to exactly where I got her from, which was Louis's bed. And not the little grey bed that she's taken over, but his chair bed. He's got like this little fluffy pad that we have on a chair. And um, she moved into that, which I'm not going to encourage that one because that's Louis's spot. The little fluffy grey bed that she stole, which I put up on. Where did I post that? I posted it somewhere. Um... The little fluffy grey bed that she stole, Louis's kind of grown out of that. It's not so bad. But he likes to still lay on it, even though he doesn't fit in it anymore. Um, but the, the fluffy chair pad thing, that's his, man. That's his spot. Like, that's his, that's his chair in the lounge room. No one gets that chair except for Louis. And if someone sits in it, he looks at them like, what the hell, dude? That's my chair. And then he just sits on the floor staring at them all sad. So, Francis, what did you go with? Oh, scarf. I think I may need to find some more green wool. There you go. Oops, split that yarn. Come back here. Let's not split it. Uh. So out of curiosity, in the chat, pop it in. Do you prefer acrylic, wool, or cotton? Like if they're the three, cho three, th three choices, if you've got three choices and you get to choose between a wool, acrylic, wool, or cotton and cash is not the issue, which one do you lean towards? I would say for me, I tend to lean towards the cotton. Um... 
because of temperature here. But we're, I love making beanies out of nice wool. But I tend to lean towards the cotton. It's wool for knit spin girls. Wool for Francis, especially super fine merino. Nice. I like a nice super fine merino. I mean, uh... <laughs> Um, Stacy says woolly wool, wool for Megan, cash merino, um, that's not pure wool, but I get it. <laughs> um, Leanne says I can't pick all necessary in my stash for different projects. That, that, yeah, that does make it tricky. That does make it tricky. Um. Oh, what have I done there? I did not do two twisties at the start because these are double trebles, not trebles, or double, triple, tri triple crochets. Um, Natalie says, a wool blend, and I'm a little sensitive to 100% wool. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, definitely wool for Jennifer. I love indie dyed wool. I love indie dyed wool. Look, one of the things, I do love indie dyed wool, and I think it's awesome, but sometimes I just, I just need the plain colours. Um, and not all indie dyes do a plain color range. Some do, which I just love. Some don't. And I get it. Like, I understand why they don't. Because I was an indie dyer. I totally understand the logistics. But I'm really glad that I did make some, some not variegated and semi, like, most of mine were like semi-solids. So I didn't do a solid color because, like, you could just go to, spotlight or whatever and get your solids I've, I've caught yarn there and it's making life miserable why are you there I don't like you go away one two let's try again without that yarn in the way isn't it amazing how if you just hold something out of the way it doesn't get in the way and then you can do the stitches you need to do and not catch the stupid tail from the blanket stitch row like would ah oh, these are the squares I want to block before um before I uh stitch them together. So now you can kind of see why I want to block them because they are a bit lacy and they really need a good like, you know, they need a good blocking out to be able to really see it. And then I'm going to crochet join them together. The instructions on the webs on the pattern, they're sewn together. I'm not sewing them together. Heck no. But I will crochet them together. And then they get a crochet border around the outside. So, yeah. And they're about seven inches when I give them a little hand press like this. So, um, it's a good size square. I'm just like looking... That's my hand stretched. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Lisby's back. We've changed project, Lisby. Have you, were you here for our project change? Um, Leanne says, I have so much hand dyed and I'm not getting through it. I need to have a solid year and use hand dyed only. A goal for 2024, may maybe. I don't know about that. I don't know about using up all of your hand dye, right? Like, just for the sake of using it up, honestly. Um, use it, for sure. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes a splash of hand dyed in a solid colour looks amazing and really lets the hand dyed show. Whereas if you're just making a project and mixing a few different hand dyes together, I find that sometimes they can look a little muddied and it kind of doesn't do the yarn you know a service so it depends um it depends uh we did we did start with our with our other blanket we worked on that for the first hour and then we have changed over to my star wars fusion blanket um for the second half um so yeah because, you know, May the 4th and all that. This is the May. Uh, 
we got. So I've seen some amazing streamer gear, right, that I really want to get my hands on. I've got no real reason to run out and buy it, right? Because everything I have works. But I have entered some competitions to try and win it. <laughs> right? And if I win it, I'm going to change from a webcam here to our 30-minute timer cam. So we might be back to, like, announcing, you know, that. But it would give us a much higher quality video. And this webcam is starting to die. There's sections of it that don't focus at all. So, like, here... I mean, it's not super focused and I don't have it on autofocus, but here, but over here, it's like there's a foggy halo and I've checked and I've cleaned it and I just think the camera's dying. Um, we have had this, this Brio for quite a few years and it does a great job and I love it, but rather than buy a new Brio, I'd probably prefer to try and utilize one of my better quality cameras. So the catch is I need another capture card. So if I win this Streamer X from Rode that I really want, um, it means I get a second capture card, which means I can bring in another good quality camera. So I can move away from... And we could probably put Louis Cam on this this one and we'll, we'll test out. We'll see which one looks better. Um, and phase out the old C920. Because it, it's, it's legit. Louis Cam is a C920. This, like, that webcam... I bought it half price on sale in a closing down sale of, I want to say Dick Smith. Do you guys remember when Dick Smith closed down? Um, yeah, so I bought that a long time ago, a really long time ago. Um, and, oh, wait, hang on. I'm not, I haven't done a corner stitch. I've just done whatever the heck I feel like. Hang on. Do the stitches that you're supposed to do, not just whatever the heck you feel like, um, if you want it to match, Chantel. But yeah, so I would I would probably bring in the old um, Canon camera. I mean, I have entered a competition to win another Sony camera, so who knows? I might get another Sony. Um, I really do love the Sonys. I think they're great. Uh, this particular software, it can actually bring in a Canon camera without a um, without a capture card. And I, I tested it out the other day. It's not good quality. You need the capture card. So we're not going to do it unless um, something changes. And I either get some extra clients in my business or um, I win one. That's basically where I'm at. Uh Lizby, tonight is the next Fiberific night, just so you know. Uh, face cam. I miss face cam. I know. I still got the coffee cups, man. I actually think the coffee cups are still on the on the Red Bubble store. Um, yeah, I just finished a modular jumper for my son. I put pictures in the fun zone. Awesome. I'll go and check those later. Remind me to bring my ball of rainbow yarn from my queen to the next Fiberific. I think it will colourful. <gasps> Because, Lisby, none of those ones that I bought at Spotlight, none of them worked. I'm so disappointed. Um, I've been doing some test swatches next to try plan pooling. It doesn't even, it does do even stitch counts. <gasps> oh, that sounds amazing. Do you remember where you bought it from and, you know, all that jazz, like so I could buy more? If, if I'd so felt the need, just, you know, throwing that out there. Um, Lizby and I a few weeks back after a caffeinated crafters we went and hit a spotlight store and we were so disappointed with the offering honestly it was so disappointing um, yeah it was just like oh, okay cool <laughs> it was not made of awesome it was not made of awesome so, yeah. Um, oh, awesome. Hobby. Easy to get. Excellent. I'm going to, I'm so excited now. Are you going to come to Caffeinated Crafters tonight or are you going to come to the one in a couple of weeks? Because like, I'm, I've got to temper my excitement. Like if you're coming tonight, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. If you're not, I need to be like, 
chill. Um, so yeah, I really want some plan pooling to work. Honestly, I I'm like catching up on some older like things, right? And oh, what have I done here? I've got an extra. I've got two extra stitches somehow. Well, let's fudge it. I'm going to pull back so that both the stitches aren't in the exact same spot, if that makes any sense. So I don't want two on either side of the same repeat. So I'll do that. Um, I've given up trying to buy yarn from Spotlights. My tastes have changed and they really only do budget or acrylic. Yeah, or they have stuff that should be better priced at a high price, if that makes sense. We really noticed that there were some yarns in there that was just like, really? They're charging this much for that? Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not it's not my go-to place. Um, but I, I thought, you know, I'm going to try because... Someone here had said, oh, you can get this. Uh, it was a lot. Was it Lion Brand Landscapes? They had it, but I really didn't like it. So I didn't buy it. Um, was it Lion Brand Landscapes? It was very. I don't know the word to describe it. It wasn't me. It was like it was kind of like it was a single for a start, which I don't like. Um, but it was also kind of fluffy and not aging well, hanging out at Spotlight. <laughs> Let's go with that. Not aging well, living at Spotlight. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, the one in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. I will, I will temper my excitement. I will temper my excitement. Uh, one, two, three, four, one more. Um, yeah. I mean, you need your chauffeur. I totally get it. I don't know what I'm going to get tonight for dinner. Because I'm really hungry now. So I'm going to have a biggish lunch. So I'll probably just get a light dinner. Was that you making that noise then, Louie? Or was that... Psycho Kitty. Getting ready to... Do the walking sideways on her back legs with her little cat fists waving around in the air. She does that, by the way. For no reason. And in we go. Ooh, we're nearly at the end of the thing. Ah, oh, Francis has leftover lamb ragu. That sounds good. I don't have any leftovers. We had takeaway last night. We took the advantage of the fact that Abby wasn't home to be able to get takeaway that we wanted to get. I need to remember that what I was going to cook last night probably would have been better to cook it last night. Um, because I'm not going to be home for tea tonight either. So I feel a bit guilty. Try not to feel too guilty, but I do feel a little guilty. Oh, you got butter chicken leftovers? Nice. I love butter chicken. Is it like good butter chicken? Some butter chickens aren't necessarily good. The butter chicken I make, not good. I just make it. It's fine. It'll do the job. It's just a jar sauce. I love getting butter chicken from the actual, you know, Indian store. I have a feeling it could be something to do with the fact that um, I always buy naan when I like, and like not just standard naan, but garlic and cheese naan. <laughs> so it's just me or does garlic and cheese make everything better? 
Like, seriously. It's like, oh yeah, let's get garlic bread with cheese. <laughs> oh, that could be one of my downfalls. I didn't realise that until right this second. All right, there we go. End of end of a square. We did a square. It's not too bad, not overly oily, and has nice flavour. Lovely. Do, do, do. I need a drink. That coffee was cold and it's done. Oh, good. I'm not alone in my love of garlic and cheese naan. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> garlic and cheese make lime bread less scratchy. <laughs> I mean... <coughs> If you're eating it, if you're eating it, you, there's other problems. There's other issues. If you're eating the, oh, that one's pretty cool. I didn't realize that was that one. I like that. That's cool. All right. Uh, that's the, that's the front. Oh, I need tissue. Beep. Alrighty. On to the next one. Do do do. Round we go. Single crochets all the way around. Um, garlic and cheese bread. Yeah, absolutely. I like there's one that you can buy at the supermarket. It's a, it's not cheese. It's just garlic bread. And it actually goes like nice and crispy. Like it's, it's like little round slices. It's not like the little loaf where they've just shoved it in there and you end up with a soggy loaf. Uh, FYI, I don't consider the garlic bread that, that like Domino's and pizza places do as good. That's all trash panda. It just tastes like soggy, salty bread. I don't like it. It doesn't taste like garlic. There's no flavor other than saltiness and wetness. And garlic bread should not be damp. Now, I could be getting fussy in my old age, but garlic bread should not be wet I'm just saying um but anyway there's this stuff that I buy at Woolies and it's all pre-made and you just put the slices on a tray in the oven and it is so good and it gets so like you bite into it and it's like <sighs> it's so crispy I love it um, I don't buy it that often because Abby doesn't like it because she likes soggy garlic bread and it's too crunchy. Um, so she, I don't buy it. I like the supermarket with the top and then top it with grated cheese. I never even thought to stick grated cheese on it. You know, I'm, make, I'm just going to have to buy it, add grated cheese to it and test it. I, you know, we have to do these things for science. Sometimes we just have to do this stuff for science, honestly. Um... Garlic bread should be crunchy and very garlicky because it's kind of the point. It's garlic bread where you go, is there garlic on here? That's not garlic bread. That is buttery oven bread. I don't know. What do we even call that if garlic bread's not garlicky enough? Because you can't call it garlic bread. Um, if you slice up the soggy garlic bread and put it in the air fryer, it improves it. Does it? Because, I mean, we get... We'll get Domino's every now and again. Abby's a Domino's fan. And um, we end up throwing away half the garlic bread because I don't eat it. And Tim doesn't like it on day two. So, oh, Francis, I've been using the Mexican bag of grated cheese, like with all the different cheeses in it. I love it. I think it's great. It's a really nice mix of some different cheeses. And I like that it's pretty and multicolored. I mean, various shades of yellow and orange. Um, rather than just pale yellow. 
I, I've normally been like a, you know, the, the bag of, um, what's it called? Same brand, but they do like a, is it like Melt or, you know, Melt Plus or something like that, something like that, where it's like all these, full of all these super melty cheeses. Um, we normally get that one, but I've been doing some like Mexican-y themed or inspired dishes. Um, and I wanted something a little bit different for the cheese factor. So I grabbed a bag of that and I am loving it. I would totally grab it again. I would totes grab it again. Um, pizza plus mix. There's a bag in the fridge. I don't know if this is the pizza one. There's another one. There's because there's the pizza one. Maybe it is the pizza one. I don't know. It's a green bag. That's all I can tell you. But they do like a few different types and it might be... I don't know. I'm going to have to... I'm, you realise I'm going to have to Google the the Woolies website, which is where I do my grocery shopping, to check because my brain's not going to cope with not remembering which bag of cheese I bought last time because somehow that will become important to me and I will need to look it up before my brain will let me move on to the next thing. Does that ever happen to anyone else? It frustrates the life out of me. I know it's not that important. I know it's not a big deal. And my brain's just like, ah, uh, hey, yeah, no, you're not going to actually be able to do anything else or think about anything else till you work out exactly which bag of cheese it was that you bought two months ago. Seriously, brain. Does my head in. Yep, Francis as well. Okay, Francis, thank you. We're not alone. We are not alone. In the fact that our brains are butt faces and that the tr oh I'm just making the camera shake why didn't somebody tell me I was just like I was angry crocheting and making the whole table like Whoa. now I've just got to stop it <laughs> calm crochet let's not shake the table let's not make the camera wobble with anger and dismay And the microphone shake. But that was because I whacked it with a crochet hook. That's totally different. And that's legit allowed. Because the microphone's quite close to where my hands are working. <sighs> okay. We're on a corner. Do the corner stuff. Chantel. Am I in the right stitch for the corner? I am. Good, good, good. Everything's happening rightly. Except for the fact that I forgot to put two, two things in there. Shaking desk makes you... Yeah. Uh... Kelly, I think it's perfect Italiano. I think. I don't know. It's green. It's a green bag. That's all I can tell you. Look, hang on. Okay. My preferred cheese brand, everybody, <laughs> is the perfect Italiano. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I know. Okay. I know. You guys didn't need to know that. <laughs> Talk about overshare. Now you guys know what brand of cheese I buy. Um, oh dear. Right. It's all good. It's nothing to see here. Um, yep, it is. That's it. Perfect melt. I think it's perfect melt. I think it's perfect melt. Because I do, I like the Mexican one too. The Mexican one's the one we've got right now, which is the one I just went and looked at. And I know the one I usually buy is the same brand in the same bag that has different cheese and a different name. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for helping my brain to move on. I appreciate you all, honestly. I really do. 
I also highly recommend Perfect Italiano Cheese. I think it's delicious. It's so good. Um, I know not everybody can get it. Um, I know it's Australian-based cheese. So um, it's if you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. Yeah, perfect melt, four different cheeses, and they all melt amazingly, and it makes fantastic toasted sandwiches. And if you've got it, put it into your spaghetti, and you scoop up your spaghetti, you have cheese danglers all the way to the plate. Um, I like that. Not everybody does, but I do. So, yeah, it's good. And it's great in an oven bake and great on pizza and so many, so many things. It's so good. Um, Kelly says, we buy the perfect Italiano too. They have nice blends. They do have nice blends. Like if I just want to get plain mozzarella, I'll, I'll look around. But when I want a blend of cheeses, I always end up in the perfect Italiano. Um, I know it's a bizarre... I mean, we, we just talk about random things here, right? We should just be used to it. Uh, Lisby says it's my favourite cheese too. Oh, yay. Look at all of us, like with our perfect Italian cheese addictions. Um, yeah, like in saying that, I have to freeze my cheese bags because we just don't go through it fast enough. So I make out like, oh, I ate 11 million bits of cheese. No, we don't really. But the cheese we do buy is good cheese. Awesome for a big baked spud as well. Abby is obsessed at the moment. She's like, can we do baked potatoes? I'm like, absolutely. No problem. She's like, in a fire pit. And I'm like, no. She's like, oh my God, mom, why not? I'm like, because my asthma is a mess and the smoke from your stupid fire pit will send me over the edge. It won't even be that bad, mom. Like, okay, sure. No. Um... Francis has two in the freezer. I freeze mine so the teenagers don't eat it all in a day. Yeah. Yep. Ours is more that we don't do it. We don't eat it all in a day. And then you go to use it and there's moldy cheese in the bag and that smell. I can't deal with that smell. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that goes there. And then that goes there. All right. We're back onto another corner. Um, yeah, I am seriously contemplating getting a different desk. This one takes up a huge amount of room and I don't raise it like I used to when I first got it out in the shack because I would pack orders here. I'd raise it and lower it, raise it. I don't do that anymore. I keep it at a static height and it's why everything shakes. It's the desk because the desk shakes. Um, so I'm seriously contemplating changing desks. It's the next thing on the list. It's the, the next likely thing. Like the technology stuff is like, that's dreamland, right? This is likely because I can't handle the shaking myself. So, yeah. And I can't help but rest my arms on the table. I really, I try to keep them off and work up high. It also brings my hands a bit closer to the camera, but I do tend to just rest my elbows and then the shaking starts. Um, there's only two of us. We can't eat, out, eat it fast enough. Yeah, there's three of us. Same deal. We just cannot eat it fast enough. Why not build a desk? Because I'm don't have the equipment and hello Russell great to see you um but yeah no I, I'm not going to build a desk I'll buy one I actually have a really amazing desk from my teenage life it was it was the postmaster general's desk at a post office in Wynnum where I grew up and my uncle bought it and he's a French polisher and he did it all up but it's as big as this is and it's the office desk so, I mean, maybe we could just switch them out. I mean, that's a possibility. I could just get my favorite desk back. I don't know if I can, I'll have to check. I don't know if I can clamp things to it. I think it's got like a lip all the way around it. So maybe that will rule it out. Because I've got to be able to, I've got, let me look. One, two, three. I've got like five things clamped to the desk. 
yeah, five things clamped on. So the microphone stand, webcams, lights, other cameras, little thing for my headphones. Um, I bought mine used from an office supply store, 25 bucks. Nice. I'm hitting an, a, um, a used office supply store for a new office chair soon. Um, so maybe I'll keep an eye out for a desk. Because I love this desk. I think it's awesome. But I just, it's just not serving the purpose anymore. And it's actually annoying me. And it's also a little bit deep. A little bit too deep. Oops, wrong stitch. Let's try again. Um, so, yeah. So those of you that are joining the chat now, we were doing our Math Rocks blanket. But as it is May the 4th, we did change projects at the one hour mark over to my Star Wars Fusion blanket to make it a bit more Star Wars-ish. Um, yeah, we do have used furniture stores, so um, I'll be able to go and check that out. There's actually one not too far from me. So um, some of them try to charge brand new prices and they're like, oh, it's barely used. It's like, whatever, dude, if I want a, a new, if I want to pay new table prices, I'm going to go and buy a new table. Like, seriously. But there's even some places that um, there's a place nearby that's a, what do you call that? Where... They get all the furniture and stuff that have been, um, what's the word, like discontinued or, or like it's still new. It's still all new furniture, um, but the pricing's ridiculously cheap. It's a, t it's a tender, a tender house. I don't know what it's called. Tender something. Tender center. A tender center. And you put a bit on it. So you've got a, you know, there's a a fee and all this sort of stuff, but it still works out to be inexpensive. Um, but yeah, so I've got some options around here that I could go and look at. Um, I definitely don't want an, another um, Ikea table. If I can avoid it, I want something a bit more stable. Um, but I'll need to get some measury dues to work out exactly what size I really, really want and what I need. Um, so that will make a difference. Uh, I'll tell you what, a friend of mine who's a live streamer, he's actually got a hardware workbench as his live stream table and it's phenomenal and it doesn't shake and it doesn't move. And because it, he doesn't like, it's rated to take like 11 billion kilos. Um, he didn't put in all the extra reinforcing struts at the front. Because it just holds maybe 50 kilos worth of stuff instead of the 1,000 kilos. So he can roll his chairs in and out, no problems. Maybe I'll look at something like that as well. Because that won't, that won't shake. Or it shouldn't. It shouldn't shake. Um, where am I working into? What have I done here? Have I been focusing and then not focusing? I'm out of stitch again. Um, uh, yeah, I'm definitely out of stitch again. So I'm going to jimmy you and move you over an extra one. I'm just going to jimmy it. Because, like I said, um, part of the, um, the problem I had with the blanket stitching was I didn't realise... The importance of making sure that I had the exact number. I was just trying to fit as many in as I could without realizing that there was a reason for it until after I'd started stitching them. Um, workbenches are usually too high for seated crafts. Um, my chair is like su super height adjustable, so I've got no issues there. I can, I can, um, I can just adjust the chair up higher. Um, Game Widow says, should look into one to replace my sewing desk. Yeah. Um, she's not ready yet, Sally. Hang on a second. Oh, <laughs> Sally's telling me to look at the time. Thank you, Sally. I'll get to the corner and then we'll end off. 
Actually, you know, what? I'm going to have to fudge that one back. I've, that's a lot of extras. I still, I'm still way off. All right. Thank you, Sally, for letting me know what time it is. Um, we'll, we'll wish out the May the 4th. Louis hiding in the corner down there, everybody. So, um, I will see you all next week. Um, those that are going to caffeinated crafters tonight, my fingers are crossed that I'm going to go. Um, my nasal sniffles have, have reduced during the live stream. I'm not sure if you've noticed or not. I've noticed. I feel a bit better than what I did when I very first started. Um, and I will see you all next week. Um, back to the back to the Math Rocks blanket. But I will give you an update over on Instagram as to how this is going. Um, update some of the numbers. And I'm also updating the numbers on my Ravelry. So double check over there as well. I hope you all have an awesome day and I will catch you all next time. Bye now.